couple of years ago, Scott and I went to Spain to see Eric, who was a junior abroad, and we met up with him in Madrid, and we got together with Eric and his girlfriend, and the four of us decided we wanted to go over to the coast of Spain, to Valencia, or as they say, Valencia. And we were all excited about this trip, so we started early in the morning, and we got on the road in a very teeny little European car. It was more like a pregnant roller skate. We were all <laughs> squished in this car, and we're driving, and it was really early, and I had been sort of uh, poured into the car from the hotel, and when I finally woke up to look around, I said, you know, I really need a cup of coffee. I'm like, okay, so we pulled into a rest stop. Now, I think it's like a rest stop like we have on the throughway. And I walk in, and I know a little Spanish, and I go, quiere una café americano ear? The guy goes, que? Ear? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, ear, like I, uh, e -R, I r to go. You know, and, and the guy's like, he doesn't get it, and, and Eric's standing there kind of like this, and um, then this, this rapid fire Spanish starts between Eric and the guy, and they're, they're like talking way too much for me to hear. And all of a sudden, the guy's like calling the manager, and I'm thinking, what did I do? And people are coming out from the kitchen, and pretty soon there's all this flurry of activity. activity. Cupboards are open, and people are looking in places, and, and about five people are in the midst of this, and I, I'm just standing there in shock, trying to figure out what is going on. Finally, this one guy holds up a cup, a styrofoam cup, like it's the Holy Grail. <laughs> He's like, oh, found it. You know, and they proceed to pour the cup in. There's like five people around while the cup goes into the styrofoam cup, and then they find some tin foil and they fashion a cover over it, and then they all come at me and they, they present it to me. Whoa, okay, thank you, gracias. You know, we, we get back in the car, we squish ourselves back in the car, and I'm holding this cup, and I said to Eric, what was that all about? He said, they don't do to go in Spain. <laughs> they think you're nuts. <laughs> he said, in Spain, if you go to have a cup of coffee, you sit down, there's a saucer, there's a cup, they pour it, you drink it leisurely, maybe you smoke a cigarette, whatever, but you know, you sit and you have coffee. You don't take coffee to go. That's an American thing. So of course they were totally unprepared to have someone come in and want coffee to take in the car. Who does that? Believe me, there wasn't even a cup holder in this thing. So. But as we spend some time in Europe, you, you begin to see that their pace of life is slower, that they do take time to sit and have a cup of coffee, that they're not about the instant breakfast or the 30-minute power lunch or all the things that we rush around and do. And how we in American society are constantly thinking about how do we get to the next thing and what can we do to get ourselves there faster and to do more and to be more productive. We don't value time out to just sit and have a cup of coffee. And I think the disciples in the gospel today were sort of in the American mode because it sounds like they had been rushing around and going places and we heard in the gospel that they didn't even have time to eat. And Jesus gathers them around and he says, we need to go to a deserted place. We need to take some time out. And so off they go. They try to go to their deserted place. But when they get there, there are crowds of people. And they're all people who need healing. And what we hear in the gospel is that Jesus had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus had compassion for them. He understood that they needed to be healed. And he was the grounding force for them, the shepherd. And everybody who would have heard Mark's gospel a long time ago would have resonated with Jesus as the shepherd because they all would have known the Hebrew poetry, Psalm 23, the psalm that we read this morning, the psalm that most of us know, even if we're sort of on the fringes of Christianity, most people have heard 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And that's what we need. We need to be made to lie down in green pastures. We need to be called to rest. Think about it. When you have a physical injury, what's the first thing that happens? If you're out in the soccer field and you fall down, and somebody comes running towards you, what's the thing they yell at you? Don't move. They want you to be they want you to be there. They don't want you to move anything because if you move, you might be hurt more. So you don't move. You're, you're called to stop when you have an injury. And then the next step would be to ask what hurts. And so it's a time where you've stopped and you can consider, okay, what hurts? And then you assess how bad is it hurt? Can it take any weight? What happens if you move it? This is what Jesus calls us to do as the shepherd who maketh us lie down in green pastures. He calls us to stop. And in stopping, we can take time to assess where is the hurt? Where do we need to be healed? How bad is it? And then the next thing is that you don't want to take an injured person who's physically injured and get them up and moving too quickly. But in our society, the fast-moving society that won't stop for a cup of coffee, sometimes when we need healing, we don't take the time to stop. That, as a matter of fact, when we express maybe the pain that we're in, people will say to us, you need to move on. You need to get going. You need to get past this. But that's not how the Good Shepherd is, because the Good Shepherd has compassion. And the reason the Good Shepherd has compassion is because the Good Shepherd knows what it's like to suffer. Compassion in the Latin is with passion or with suffering, that, that Jesus knows what it's like to be with suffering. There was a, a, one of the books I was looking at was talking about the German word mitleid. I'm probably pronouncing it terribly, but David will straighten you out at coffee hour. Mitleid, which means with suffering, that it's compassion is what it means to understand what it's like to suffer, what it's like to be present to somebody who's suffering. And Jesus, as the shepherd, has compassion. Psalm 23, this is what I get to do as the preacher, comes after Psalm 22. <laughs> I point out the obvious. Psalm 22 is the psalm that we read on Good Friday. It has the famous line that Jesus says on the cross in one of the Gospels. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The answer to that question is Psalm 23. I am the Lord your shepherd, you shall not want maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. In the connection of those two psalms, we learn that the shepherd does not abandon us, but the shepherd knows what it's like to suffer. So the shepherd can have compassion. 